to make their point have more impact, they not only demonize police everywhere who risk their lives daily protecting the very minority communities which are excoriating them, they go to ridiculous extents to simultaneously canonize criminals. Listen to how Christianity Today magazine described George Floyd. He was called Big Floyd and regarded as an OG, a de facto community leader and elder statesman, his ministry partners say. De facto community leader and elder statesman? There is no way these woke, middle-class, suburban white writers can be so ignorant of inner city culture that they actually think OG is an abbreviation for community leader and elder statesman. OG is an acronym for original gangsta. Floyd was a gangster, not an elder statesman. Does he deserve to die because of it? No. The message is very clear from the gospel that Jesus dined with sinners and that no one is beyond his grace, no matter how troubled. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Mark 2.17 That's a beautiful message. That's the gospel we are to declare. We are called to obscure that message and lie to the public to advance a political agenda. Continue. George Floyd was a person of peace sent from the Lord that helped the gospel. I kid you not. The article in Christianity Today actually calls Floyd a person of peace sent from the Lord that helped the gospel. What kind of person was he? Well, we know that he had an extensive record, including home invasion, where he pistol whipped and held a pregnant woman at bay with his gun pushed into her pregnant belly, threatening to shoot her unborn child if she interfered with his apostles, ransacking her home. That was in the past. He was a changed man, and God can forgive any man. Look at Paul. He was a murderer and persecutor of the church before his conversion. Agreed. And one of my most popular videos ever was about the conversion of the son of Sam, David Berkowitz. The point of that video, and this one, which we'll get to, is exactly that. No man is beyond redemption. But let us test the fruit. Because I'm not judging Floyd's soul, but I am questioning the veracity of Christianity Today's author. What fruits can we see of George Floyd's conversion? He has a daughter whom he abandoned in Texas to move to Minneapolis. Do you think fatherless families might be a bigger plague to the black community than the cops who protect them? And maybe that's an issue pastors of actual courage might want to address? Let's put that to the side. Police were called to the scene of this case because Floyd had allegedly passed a counterfeit bill and more importantly was acting irrationally and erratically as someone under the influence of narcotics and about to drive away, further jeopardizing motorists. He died not by strangulation as everyone assumes, but from a condition called excited delirium causing cardiac arrest brought on by an overdose of fentanyl, which is a deadly downer, and methamphetamines, which are extreme uppers. Before I get accused of defending the officers involved, as is always the price for defending truth instead of scoring points with the world, I am not. While Officer Chauvin was, as will come out in the trial, following his department SOPs of restraining Floyd until paramedic arrival, it is also the universal responsibility of all police to ensure the safety of those in custody. Once Floyd went unconscious, it's around the five minute mark, the officer was responsible to render first aid and failure to do so with a person in your custody is gross negligence to the point of it warranting third degree murder charges as per the written statutes of that municipality. 
I'm all for justice. Justice means due process in this investigation and a fair but speedy trial by Chauvin's peers based upon the totality of evidence. And if it is proved beyond a reasonable doubt that he is guilty, then conviction. That is justice. Social justice, on the other hand, is the callous attitude that Officer Chauvin is guilty of a national history of police brutality and that all officers are guilty of the crimes of Derek Chauvin. The ugly sister of social justice is political expediency, which upped the charges to a completely untenable murder too, with the attitude, you do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. We'll go back to the article for a little more before we move on. And keep in mind, if this was just one article, I would shake my head and move on. This is being addressed because there is a pervasive condition of Christians repeating lies to appear righteous instead of accepting ostracization for defending truth. And again, I'm not defending the actions of anyone accused. I am only pointing out the totality of circumstances which in no way jives with the lying media's narrative which Christians keep repeating. The article continues, the viral video of Floyd pinned to the pavement by a Minnesota police officer joins a devastating canon of cell phone footage depicting police using force against black men. His friends in the ministry said that when it turned up on the news, they weren't ready to watch another clip so soon after the recording of Ahmaud Aubrey being shot while jogging in Georgia. Ahmed Aubrey was not shot while jogging 12 miles from his house. That would make the round trip a marathon. There had been a series of break-ins in the neighborhood and he had been spotted criminally trespassing in someone's home. When spotted, he fled and neighbors gave chase, which is legal while carrying weapons, also legal, and keep in mind probably wise because one of Aubrey's previous arrests was for illegal gun possession. When confronted by this armed posse, Aubrey attacked and wrestled for the shotgun, getting killed in the struggle. Was it a horrible tragedy and a waste of life? Absolutely. It hurts my soul to see such things. Is this an example of a national epidemic of racist hunting down and shooting black people while jogging for no reason? No. Am I defending the McMichaels? Nope. Everything they did was legal, but in our current environment, I guess I'm going to show a little cowardice as well and say it's stupid to inject yourself in situations which don't affect you directly. Let the police handle it. There is no winning in that scenario. You inject it yourself, so now you are on trial. Arbery's poor decisions led to the loss of his life, and the McMichael's poor judgment might result in the loss of theirs as well. What I am saying is that the very trial I speak of should determine their guilt or innocence, and not the court of public opinion, aka the mob. And for pastors to stoke the flame of racial division to show how woke they are and that they're one of the good ones, instead of being the calm voice of reason, telling people to respect the law and respect the process has terribly destructive results. Not only for the officers who we see getting executed throughout the country as a result of these lies, nor just to the innocent citizens whose communities and businesses are being looted and burned to the ground, the person these lies hurt the most is the very person that woke pastor is trying to appeal to.